Four children found dead at an illegal construction site in central China, now outrage after journalists were attacked for trying to investigate. China is rolling out digital coupons in an effort to stave off a recession, but many residents point out fallacies. Internal documents obtained by NTD show the infected cases in Harbin City may be 200 times the official figure. Residents in China's northernmost province are worried that the epidemic has been seriously concealed by the regime. And U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo slams China for failing to disclose the virus outbreak in a timely manner to the WHO. Welcome to China In Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Many Western countries have given cash to citizens as relief aid. In Wuhan, authorities are instead creating $71 million worth of digital coupons to get people spending again. You can get it no matter your income. All you need is a cell phone and a fast hand because you need to grab it with a mobile app. It goes like this. Buy 60 yuan worth of goods at a supermarket, you get 20 yuan discount. Or the rate can be even lower depending on the type of store. It's a kind of rebate. But one netizen did the math, and given Wuhan's population, each person would only get $5 on average. And besides that, you'd still need to spend money first before getting the rebate. Not ideal for the many people in Wuhan who say they have no money left. One netizen says you need to buy a certain amount before you're even eligible for the rebate, and shops are even raising their prices. This coupon is just bait to get people to buy more. Some other Chinese cities have done the same. Chinese citizens see schools reopening as a sign that the situation is easing. But this video shows a school in Heilongjiang province closing again. The person taking the video says it's only been two weeks since the 12th graders resumed school. Now they have to take another break and will study from home. Four children were found dead in Henan province in central China after a truck at an illegal construction site poured debris on them. The families wanted to go inside but were blocked by police. They weren't allowed to look at the CCTV footage either. When reporters arrived to investigate, they were blocked from doing interviews by an unknown group of people. The reporters had permission from the families to report on the funerals, but when they arrived, they were stopped and beaten up by an unknown group of people. One had his phone taken, glasses broken, and his clothes torn. Another was manhandled and choked. The journalist later got his phone back, but the data had been wiped. It's still unclear who exactly is behind the attacks. The families later signed a deal with the construction company and don't want to talk about the situation anymore. Fortune magazine released its 2020 World's Greatest Leaders, this year with a focus on the heroes amid the pandemic. Top of the list is whistleblower Dr. Li Wenliang. He was silenced by authorities for trying to sound the alarm about a new virus emerging in his city. He later died from the virus. Fortune calls him the face of the pandemic. Australia's Prime Minister Scott Morrison spoke with leaders of the U.S., Germany and France to discuss how to go about the investigation into the origin of the virus. Morrison later wrote on Twitter he had a very constructive conversation with President Trump on how the two nations would respond. His calls with France and Germany focused on the WHO and the need for greater international cooperation and vaccine development. It comes as world leaders are growing increasingly frustrated by China's lack of transparency and are calling for an independent investigation into the outbreak. In Europe, Sweden has become the first state to close all Confucius institutes, which many see as Trojan horses for the CCP. Analysts say this points to unraveling ties between Sweden and China. The UK is set to start human testing of a coronavirus vaccine candidate this week. British Health Minister Matt Hancock said Tuesday a vaccine developed by researchers at Oxford University is set to roll out on Thursday. According to a statement, the study will include 510 healthy volunteers. According to a press release earlier this month, this vaccine is one of the leading candidates currently in development globally. The vaccine combines a weakened common cold virus with genes for the coronavirus spikes or crown. 
And in Belgium, biotech firm Zentech says it has developed a new rapid coronavirus antibody test. They claim it has a 100% accuracy rate. The test takes 10 to 15 minutes. While the test can't detect if the virus is present in the body, it can detect if someone developed antibodies against the virus. The firm plans to produce 3 million a month. These tests could help countries determine when lockdown measures can be lifted. Internal documents show the infected cases in Harbin City may be 200 times the official number. Residents there are concerned the situation has been seriously concealed in China's northernmost province. NTD Xu and Rong has more. A document sent from a CDC in Harbin City to high-level officials shows that 34 locals tested positive in a CCP virus antibody test in Harbin's Daowai district on April 10th. But the province's health commission reported only one case for the whole of Harbin City. That brought the total number of confirmed cases in the city to two, not including asymptomatic and imported cases. To estimate the real number of infections in Harbin, we can use the figure from the Daowai report and compare it to the city's total population. Daowai district has a population of around 800,000, and Harbin has a population of 11 million. That's 14 times more. That means if Daowai District had 34 cases on April 10th, we could estimate more than 400 cases for the whole of Harbin City. That's 200 times the official number announced for that date. I don't read state-run media anymore. I got this information from influencers on social media. In Harbin and the surrounding areas, there are 182 virus hotspots. These places, including my neighborhood, are very dangerous. I am so scared, really scared. An exclusive internal recording of a meeting at a main Harbin hospital obtained by NTD reveals that the epidemic situation in Heilongjiang is now the worst in the country and cases are still increasing. In the meeting, one staff member said that many infections are related to asymptomatic cases and areas of Harbin city are going to be locked down again. The hospital warned staff not to eat out since many recent cases are connected to people eating out. One Harbin resident told us she feels the situation has worsened. It feels like the epidemic has spread and is not under control at all. Chinese state media reported on April 22nd that non-residents can no longer enter residential areas. Even vehicles registered in other places can't be there. Mr. Kong, an owner of a factory in Harbin, said the government doesn't have any relief policies. So many shops and factories in Harbin have been forced to close down due to high rent and no business. The epidemic situation is really serious. My factory is now closed. There is no way it can reopen. It's been three months already. We wanted to open it up again, but the epidemic came back, so we closed again. Such a big loss. In recent days, videos show areas being closed down again. Netizens say the second wave has arrived. There has never been such an expensive price for vegetables, and people's income in the Northeast is low. The testing fees, isolation fees, and treatment fees should not be borne by our citizens. They should be covered by the government. It's forcing people to commit suicide because there's no other way out. Reporting by Yuning Huang and Sherwin Rong, NTD News. A hospital's VP in China's virus epicenter is removed from his position for criticizing authorities' policies. We spoke with the doctor about it. NTD's Juliet Song reports. A doctor at China's virus epicenter has been punished for criticizing national policies. He wrote articles during the pandemic, but many were blocked or deleted. These are just academic views, nothing else, simply academic perspectives. But some academic viewpoints aren't in vogue right now. Dr. Yu was a vice president at the hospital. An employment termination letter circulating online says he criticized the Chinese authorities' virus control measures, such as imposing lockdowns or ordering people to wear face masks and stay at home. The notice said Yu didn't stop his social followers from criticizing the country's virus prevention policy, which had seriously negative impact. In writing, Yu criticized hospitals for using unproven treatments on CCP virus patients. He said people can rely on their own immune system to recover. He says taking a break, eating well, self-quarantine, and avoiding unnecessary medication can also help. Yu thinks such treatments are far more effective than antiviral drugs, which haven't gone through clinical testing. 
Once a popular figure online, Yu has now deleted all his posts on Weibo, a popular Chinese social media platform. When asked if police had visited him, he said, "Forget about it. I'd rather not say anything. I won't say anything. I'll say it in the future if I have the opportunity." He then added. History will make its own judgment. The letter asked other employees to learn from Yu's case. It warns employees to quote not cross the red line of legal regulations, realize the seriousness of political discipline, understand that politics always come first, and strictly observe political law and rules. Yu's co-workers say politics takes priority in Chinese hospitals. We have distorted his voice to protect his identity. I'll tell you one thing: of the management team in our hospital, nine out of ten don't have a medical degree. Do you understand what I just said? Politics overrides everything. Yu's job removal sparked empathy from his peers. Another popular doctor posted on social media: "There are too many people who can't tolerate different perspectives and opinions." Netizens also showed their support. One said, "On the one hand, authorities honored the late Dr. Li Wenliang, who was reprimanded. On the other hand, they reprimanded Dr. Yu Xiangdong, who is still alive." The comment is now deleted. Reporting by Xin Anli and Julia Song, NTD News. And today, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said the U.S. strongly believes the CCP broke its obligation to the WHO to give them timely, accurate, and detailed information about the virus. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said he strongly believes that the CCP did not report to the WHO fast enough when the virus broke out. We strongly believe that the Chinese Communist Party did not report the outbreak of the new coronavirus in a timely fashion to the World Health Organization. He went on to say that China has an obligation under WHO rules to give them detailed and accurate information quickly. Besides the slow response, he said the CCP still hasn't shared its sample of the virus, which could give more insights on how it has developed. CCP still has not shared the virus sample from inside of China with the outside world, making it impossible to track the disease's evolution. But Pompeo suggested that this isn't the U.S.'s job. In other words, because China joined the WHO, the WHO is responsible for making sure China follows those rules. So he urged the international agency to enforce these rules for the sake of saving lives. Stay-at-home orders are set to expire at the end of the month, and many governors have not extended them. The nation's top three virus hotspots have fewer cases, plus drops in hospitalizations. NTD's Melina Weiskup has the updates. President Trump says that 20 states are planning to reopen. Georgia is one of them. Cases there have slowed in recent weeks, despite criticism from some local mayors. The governor says it's time for the economy to recover. When we have more people moving around, we're probably going to have see our cases continue to go up. But we're a lot better prepared for that now than we were over a month ago. The state's highest number of positive cases in a day, around 800. In recent weeks, that number has dropped by hundreds. Yesterday, only 23 tested positive in Georgia. Texas is eager to restart the economy too. They already opened state parks, with more steps to come Monday. They will consider the possibility. Of opening more venues, venues like restaurants, and lawmakers in Wisconsin filed a lawsuit yesterday opposing their governor's decision to extend the stay-at-home order until the end of May. But some states aren't quite ready to reopen yet. Massachusetts and New Jersey, two of the nation's hotspots, are seeing slight drops in the number of new cases and hospitalizations. New York continues to see declines too. Over 20,000 New Yorkers have died from the CCP virus. Nearly 500 lives lost every day this week. This is not going to be over、uh, anytime soon. Stay-at-home orders in New York, New Jersey, Massachusetts, along with six other states, continue until the middle or end of May. Melina Weiskup, NTD News. As the situation eases up in New York, the USNS Comfort will soon leave the state. Fresh air and open spaces are on the horizon for those stuck at home. The U.S. is set to reopen some of its national parks as long as visitors and staff keep their distance. But in this time of trial, the beauty of springtime fills us with the peace and the hope of renewal. President Trump made the announcement on Wednesday. I'm pleased to announce that 
In line with my administration's guidelines for opening up America again, we will begin to reopen our national parks and public lands for the American people to enjoy. He spoke during a tree planting ceremony at the White House. It was held to celebrate Earth Day, National Park Week, and the upcoming Arbor Day. On this special occasion, we are renewing our strong national commitment on conserving the wonders of God's creation. One of the most important ways we uphold this tradition is by protecting our priceless national parks. A number of parks have been completely shut down across the country, an effort to abide by nationwide stay-at-home orders. The parks include Yellowstone, the Grand Canyon, Utah's Zion National Park, California's Yosemite and Sequoia National Parks. Trump didn't give further details, instead gesturing to Secretary of the Interior David Bernhardt. Bernhardt said the decisions to reopen will be made in line with governors' plans to reopen their economies. Online scammers have been taking advantage of the pandemic, posing as the IRS and even as charities. But the Department of Justice announced today it's hitting back at hundreds of fraudsters. On Wednesday, the Department of Justice announced it's disrupted hundreds of online scams looking to exploit the CCP virus pandemic. Websites posing as the American Red Cross and the IRS have been shut down by several companies after being contacted by the DOJ. So far, the department has reviewed over 3,600 complaints about COVID-19 scams. Some ask for donations or banking information, and others advertise fake vaccines and cures for the virus. But COVID-19 scams have also spread to businesses. Earlier this month, the FBI alerted private companies of fake doctor's notes used by employees, which have caused businesses to shut down. The DOJ is asking people to verify websites, emails, and advertisements related to the virus if they come across them. In Alabama, residents gather outside the state capitol to protest a stay-at-home order. The governor intends to keep the order in place through April. A group of protesters gathered outside the Alabama Capitol on Tuesday to protest the state's stay-at-home order. We're not able to work right now, and we really, really want to go back to work. Governor Kay Ivey said she intends to keep the stay-at-home order in place until April 30th. You know, I'm furloughed right now, and uh, um, um, I think, you know, what they're doing as far as the lockdown and everything is unconstitutional to start with. Ivy will decide next week on what can reopen. She says the decisions will be driven by data amid public safety concerns. Residents are concerned about their financial situations. We applied for unemployment, we've been denied. We applied for the pandemic unemployment assistance. We haven't seen a dime of it. In fact, not one single self-employed person that I know has received a dime. Alabama says it has just over 5,000 cases of the CCP virus and 144 confirmed deaths. As more states start reopening, the president and governor say it's crucial to keep monitoring the virus spread. With new tech-based ways to do that in the works, there are mixed views on if they'll help and if it should be done at all. As states start planning to reopen, testing and contact tracing are top priorities. Google and Apple have partnered on a project. They are working to make contact tracing possible using Bluetooth. But some lawmakers aren't so comfortable with the idea. Republican Senator Josh Hawley sent a letter to the companies expressing his concerns. While the tech companies say that the data collected from users will be anonymous, Hawley mentions in his letter that there are ways to get around the protection. He says Americans are right to be skeptical of this project. And some people aren't sure Google and Apple's tracing will help very much. According to a recent poll by Pew Research, six out of 10 Americans say that tracking their locations will not make much of a difference in slowing the spread. 48% of people say it's unacceptable for the government to track those who test positive for the virus. Today, a ban on most surgical abortions in Arkansas moves ahead. A U.S. appeals court allowed the state to enforce the ban. It's part of a state directive to postpone non-urgent medical procedures during the CCP virus pandemic. The 8th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in St. Louis, Missouri, halted a federal judge's order that had allowed abortions. The ruling does not affect early-stage abortions induced through medication. Arkansas is among a handful of states that have sought to limit abortion during the crisis. Their purpose is to ensure medical resources are available during the pandemic. 
A new poll shows two-thirds of Americans hold a negative view of the Chinese Communist Party. It's the highest percentage on record. The news comes as world leaders call Beijing out for its cover-up of the virus outbreak. In another recent Harris poll, Americans reported bipartisan distrust of Beijing. About 77 percent of Americans blame the CCP for the spread of the virus. That belief was echoed across the political spectrum. Britain's parliament agreed on Tuesday to move to a hybrid format while a nationwide lockdown continues. Only a handful will be allowed to enter the chamber while the rest will join online. The UK parliament will move to a hybrid format while a nationwide lockdown continues after it was agreed on Tuesday. Tuesday's sitting saw only a handful of lawmakers attending in person and more than 100 others joining virtually. House of Commons leader Jacob Rees-Mogg told the parliament that the new arrangements will initially be in place until May 12, but may have to be renewed. In 1349, when the Black Death affected this country, parliament couldn't sit and didn't. The session was cancelled. Thanks to modern technology, even I have moved on from 1349, and I'm glad to say... And I'm glad to say that we can sit to carry out these fundamental constitutional functions. And I'm enormously grateful to many who are just as traditionalist as I am, who have accepted these constraints. The House of Commons will sit on Mondays, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Under the proposed system, just 50 of this. Here at China In Focus, we dedicate ourselves to bringing you truthful, unbiased reporting. Don't forget to subscribe for the latest updates and see you tomorrow.